the new Parkway Theater, where good food, diverse entertainment, and community create a place for everyone. For showtimes and special events, check out www.thenewparkway.com. You are listening to High School 510, where sports and comedy and comedy Man, I always been Pedro, I'm sorry, man. That's how they got out west. That's what I mean. Man, I thought that was a term that back in the 80s when we used to, you know, when, it, when back in the days when like Beverly Hills Cop came out and you used to try to put down people by using gay slurs. That's what I thought Cop, <laughs> Carpetbagger was. No wonder why I was getting away with saying it to you at church. You know, I, I, I thought it was a porn term at first until I read a book. Come on. <laughs> 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 Aaron would know. Aaron, is that a porn term? No, uh, it's a term for me and Khalifa if she would have did a lesbian scene, but she didn't do none because she sucked. <laughs> I've seen nuns have sex better than you. <laughs> Dodger game, the most jerseys I see in the stands are Hernandez. Hernandez. And I'm like, is everybody wearing Kiki Hernandez jerseys because they really is that many people that love Kiki Hernandez? Or they just got the last name Hernandez? Um, it is in L.A. now. It is L.A. I, th- I, I, would, I would put my money that it probably has to do with the last name Hernandez. Because if you think about it, including pitchers, he's probably the, how many positions? Nine positions, right? Yeah. Including pitchers. One pitcher, but including the rotation in the back and in, in the closers, he's probably at least the 15th best player on the Dodgers. No, he's not a he's so not a great player. So why the hell is there so many Hernandez jerseys? He's that he's that underdog guy. He's your your utility player that is good enough to to play regularly, but not mm-hmm. regularly. Not good enough to start. <laughs> not not. I mean, regularly. they got Chris like, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, they're like they're like Kike. If we need him to start a few games, somebody's tired, somebody's got a little banged up, we can give Kike a few starts or. Just give him a normal allotment of games on a regular basis, and like it's good, it's Kiki, it's Kiki, he can handle it. But if you're like, man, we brought on the season with Kiki Hernandez as our best player, you know your team is garbage. See, I think it's just, see, I think it's me. I th- I'm think maybe it's me. Maybe it's just that Kiki Hernandez is that, is that many people named Hernandez. And, and, I, th- I think it has like, something to do with the, sure. the, the Spanish name. Because <laughs> I'll tell you this, other than Kiki Hernandez, the Dodgers are a pretty Anglo team, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that they are. Dodgers are great. You know what? They like the Oakland A's, except they actually get the great white players. Yeah. Where the Oakland A's get the mediocre, oh, like, yeah, they middle get the, tier white players. The A's get the, the the good young white players that could develop and be really good, but are never going to be. No, dominant. and I think I th- part of me thought is that part of the A's mindset? Like, let's go out and get the middle tier white player. The guys that we know ain't going to leave us. Right? Oh yeah, cuz they're like we got a chance to resign him probably. Yeah, he's yeah, going to be pretty good. He won't be, he'll be pretty good but not great. <laughs> they they purposely draft worse players so yeah. they're like, "Man, we can keep him. The other dude, he's he gone." gone. <laughs> cuz I'm wondering that cuz they have more depth. It's like you look at a team like the Dodgers, right? Mm-hmm. Dodgers have do you know how Dodgers have the most homegrown players out of everybody all Major League Baseball mm-hmm. playing. And I'm like, but they don't they don't get they don't get the compensatory picks. They don't get all those draft picks. They don't really spend money on bringing in other players. So how is it that the Dodgers got better players than like teams like the A's? Because the Dodgers got more money. And but can, how they draft them. And they these can, guys are all young. The Dodgers have more money, thus they can retain their younger talent. Thus they are able to draft the better young talent because they're not worried like they're the not A's, worried about them. We can't afford him later, so <laughs> skip him. <laughs> It's like Bowmel got this. Bowmel got this. It's yeah. all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, shout out, shout out to uh, our friends. Uh, a couple of our friends. We, we shout them out. We're saying they were willing to buy a Bob Melvin, a Bob A's jersey. Melvin jersey. The manager of the team the man- jersey. Because we were talking. Because I have a rule, Jared. Yeah. My rule said is this: I don't own any play. I own jerseys, but they have no player names. And when I do get a player name, I got a couple of that player names. They have to be in the home fame. Okay. Like I'm not getting some random person just because he was the heart of the team at one point, or or I liked him, or he came on my team for three years. Like Ed walking around with the Ed got two Kevin Durant jerseys. 
Yeah. I wonder what he doing. One USA Kevin Durant that yeah. he didn't own before. He owned it after <laughs> Kevin Durant won the title with the Warrior. <laughs> yeah. And another Warrior jersey. It's like, what do you do? Well, we all know Kevin Durant's going to end up, you know, being in the Hall of Fame. So it's it's fair. But not but what jersey he wearing. <laughs> but I will say this. Might when, wear his high school jersey. When the Warriors win a couple more titles with Draymond Green as a centerpiece and he becomes a top five Warrior all time and makes the Hall of Fame, would you wear a Draymond Green jersey? Uh, no, you can't answer that right now. I can't answer that. I can't answer that before you even open that sentence. No. Hey, shout out to Draymond Green sponsorship. Hey, uh, come on our show. Anyways, you know, I, I think there is something to be said about, you know, rocking. I don't like wearing jerseys with other people's names on it either necessarily. I also don't believe in that custom thing where you put your own name on it. Yeah, I think, yeah. I don't like I'll that do that as a gift for somebody, but don't you give that shit to me. Yeah, don't give that to <laughs> like, me. Like, like, I look like a sucker running yeah. around with Grayson on the back. I don't know. That, the whole thing about getting Bob Melvin's jersey was kind of interesting to me. So I was wondering, I was like, who, like, what other managers then would warrant, you know, buying their jersey if you're a fan of that team? Would you, okay, as a Dodger fan, I could see somebody buying a Tommy Lasorda jersey. Yeah. I can see. I can see. Yeah, uh, Hall of Famer, soul of the city. When he dies, it's gonna be one of the worst days in Dodger history. Yeah, right. Like that's gonna be one. They always say the sad, the three saddest days in Dodgers history. They used to say was when it was gonna be when Tom sort of passed away, when Vince Scully passed away, and when the McCourts finally got a divorce. <laughs> that, Come on. That used that was the saying around the front office back then. The the secretaries and all them always said, "Oh, this this is when they first bought the team, this is the divorce rate to happen." <laughs> so why would they wear a Bob Mill? Why would they buy a Bob Mill jersey? Would you say he's done that great of a job? I think Bob Mill has done a, a really good job with the A's. He's he's created a consistent level of play for the most part. The team is filled with uh, good players who could become very good, and that's kind of their ceiling. So he's done a good job. I give him credit. Shout yeah. out to Bob Mel- Melvin sponsorship uh, come on our show. Um, but uh, aside from that, he hasn't he hasn't you know reached the mountaintop. He hasn't uh, achieved the highest level of success. And I think maybe like if Bob Melvin coached the A's for like the next 10 years and they made the playoffs like eight out of the next 10 years and they're always in the playoffs and like always, you know, had like that, that feel like they could maybe make mm-hmm. a move and maybe get to a World they Series. They got to get to one, right? They yeah, they got to get to a World one. Series. But like then I would be like, all right, Bob Melvin had a great, great career as A's coach and he'll go down as one of the great A's coaches. Um, that's if he's able to, you know, continue to coach for a longer period of time. But um yeah, I think I think the A's are just uh, just a, a, a cycle of mediocrity. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the mediocrity is like more you know negative. Like man, we really just barely even mediocre. And then times are like man, we might be better than mediocre. <laughs> so it's like you know, it just kind of comes in ebbs and flows. It, you know, it's cyclical. So I think Bob Melvin, you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. But you haven't done an amazing or a spectacular job. If you win a World Series, then I will give you that that uh label but until then i'm gonna buy me a ricky henderson jersey hey joe hey what up oh, oh man you sound like, you sound you sound like a mix between barry white and sylvester stallone with that deep bass in your voice come on you want to try the video chat thing or what? You want to try that video chat? Why you want to do video chat? I don't want to see your black ass. That was Jared's idea. Well, Pedro, man, what's up with you, man? What's up? We just sitting here talking about baseball. You know your favorite sport. I've been really excited about the Diamondbacks uh, losing to the Dodgers, <laughs> and I was down at that game, and I was, you know, I was rooting, you know, out there. I was just excited about it. Now, anybody know the Diamondbacks actually beat the Dodgers? Did they sweep them? No. They they lost the final game out of a four-game set to the Dodgers. Oh, oh. Okay. And, and they lost yeah. it by giving up a home run in the ninth to tie and a home run in the 11th. And it was funny because I watched two of the games, and I thought it was in L.A. because that's how many people had Dodger jerseys on. And oh. then I, one guy had a sign in game four that said, that held up, Arizonians love Dodgers, L.A. Dodgers. Yeah, because that's not true Arizonian. Everybody from um, Arizona is from L.A., pretty much. <laughs> There's no no such thing as Arizona native, natives at any of these games. I thought you was an Arizona native. That's why you – isn't that no, true? I moved down to Arizona so I can get these free food stamps. <laughs> hey, Pedro. Hey, Pedro. If you could buy a jersey of any manager in any sport, who would it be? 
Mine would be, uh, if I could wear a jersey, it would probably be Dusty Baker, <laughs> along with the toothpick. <laughs> would you have the toothpick in your mouth, too? Or my boy, Ron, what was his name? Uh, Ron Washington. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ron. <laughs> But 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 you'll just have some crack in your back pocket. Yeah, Ron so, Washington. You know, so I'll, I'll take the coke. I'll take the cocaine. I'll, I'm not gonna do it, but I will sell it. Ron Washington, that man's still in the league, still teaching people how to field. It's, it's sad, man. I mean, if Ron Washington were if he if he coached middle league in the state, then then he wouldn't. Then someone like him wouldn't be needed because these motherfuckers don't know how to field until he gets. It's home. Crack, don't you? <laughs> Him, John Lucas, Tony Dumas. We go do the list. We do the whole list. Sean Kemp, Lawrence mm-hmm. Taylor. Hey, so 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 you would so you would do uh, uh, Ron Washington or uh, who's other dude? Dusty, Dusty Baker. Okay, I, I agree with that. I get down with that. I get down with that. I, Either high I or you have to have a real like personal relationship. Phil Jackson's shoulder pads. <laughs> It's like, I want that seat cushion he got. <laughs> that seat, man, that was, that was a seat cushion. He felt comfy. He was like, shit. Hey, wait a minute. Does the Derek Fisher, Derek Fisher uh, suits and outfits come with other people's wipes? <laughs> <laughs> it comes with his, it comes with his uh, address uh, file and his phone gets downloaded to yours. Yeah. Uh, every time you hit a player's name, this is really the wife number that come up, not the player's <laughs> number. Like, uh, I hit Matt Barnes thinking, oh, okay, wow, I'll get to talk to Matt Barnes. All of a sudden, it's calling <laughs> Gloria Govan. Moving boundaries. What the hell is that? Pedro, what the hell is that in the background? Oh, I had noise in the background. I didn't know that was me. <laughs> Come on, dude. You over there putting on this okay. He's my stepdad. <laughs> Part <laughs> six. Terrible. Part six. Featuring yeah, me and Khalifa. That's, that's when we had me stop. I had to stop after that one. See, yeah, he said, he, <laughs> said he stopped watching porn. I ain't, never, I ain't never been back in the store of that sort since. <laughs> <laughs> it was when you reach the age when you're like, oh shit, they talk about me. Yeah, I was like, yeah, okay, it's, it's time to give it up. All right, so sh- should we start the show, guys? Let's start this shit up. Start this show. All right, we're going to start the show up. Um, uh, Pedro, I need a letter. Okay, let's go with the letter J. Finally, someone, someone chose something different. Okay, J. J. Jubilant Janky Jigaboos. Jambalaya. Juicy Fruit. Jujubees. Jujubees. That's two words. Django. That starts with a D. Jabberwockies. <laughs> <laughs> Djibouti. Come on, man. That started with a D. <laughs> the D is silent, y'all. Anyways, uh, Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to High Score 510. You can catch us on High Score 510 on the Twitter, the Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube, and on the HighScore510.com. We are here with... Uh, this is Aaron Grayson, also known as A.G. Smooth, coming at you harder than uh, R. Kelly's girlfriends grinding to make that legal fees and money for him. I don't know what they do on the grind, but they grind him. He got him on the grind. All right. <laughs> I don't want to see a woman in the NFL no more than I want to see Ronda Rousey versus Floyd Mayweather in a cage match against Brock Lesnar. No more than I want to see Lisa Leslie trying to block out Zion Williamson for the last Popeye sticker sandwich. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Uncle Jimmy won't even play a woman in a Madden video game. A woman's storms ain't no match for Uncle Jimmy and the hit stick. Hey, man, I will hit stick a woman's weave into another area for a reckless abandon. <laughs> Man, that had to be the greatest soundbite ever. How'd you find it? I was wonderful. <laughs> Dude, Pedro, man, I, I, I told Jared about this soundbite last night, and I couldn't find it. I was so hot. I was like, man, I couldn't. Oh, Jared, I was looking all morning. I was looking while walking the dog right now, and I couldn't find it. Uh, oh, man, I told you it was bad. I told you it was bad, Uncle Jimmy, boy. Man, I was out there, man. I was looking for it. It took me a while to find it, man. It was harder than... Trying to block out Zion Williamson for the last Popeye sticker sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a difficult endeavor, Dude, but I, I was, found I was, it. Dude, you know, I got to give you credit, uh, though, Jerry. I should have bought brunch, though, that you found that. 
What did he say about the hair weave? What did he say about the hair weave? He said, he said, I will hitchhike a woman's weave into another area. <laughs> 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 Hey, bro, that was the off of the Carly Lloyd, you know, when she kicked that field goal and they asked, how would you feel about a right. woman playing baseball? I know where it's from, football. but I, I didn't know. I never hear. Who was that doing the comments? That was, uh, that was Uncle Jimmy. He's on that Speak for Yourself. Yeah, he's an ignorant ass oh. coon. That's yeah, like cool. super cooning, bro. He said, he said, with a reckless abandon at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a woman around when I'm on that hit stick. Oh, that shit was hilarious, <laughs> bro. That shit was hilarious. All right. Um, and we are also here with. AKA, hey, I guess it's your friendly captain, <laughs> Captain P Funk, uh, also known as. Mr. Mr. Craig, also known as Papa P, also known uh, also known as DK uh, as Papa P DK Fisher, the lady stiller. <laughs> <laughs> the big dummy go to whoever sat up here and said that their mama was six foot one, two fifty five, and could have played a fullback. <laughs> Who was she gonna play for? The Crenshaw grandma? <laughs> Dude, I saw that one live here. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is what I listen to when I walk the dogs, man. They be cooning. The straight cooning. They, they, they would talk about Marcellus Wiley, mom, because he claimed his mom could have played fullback because they were on. size. Come on. Tell you, that Carly Come Lloyd on. episode just gave you nothing but jewels, dude. <laughs> dude he said some ignorant shit. He he said, was, wow. What he I said? personally live vicariously through my women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's crazy, oh, wow. bro. Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy. So, yeah, I got to start for wherever he's at. I got to start following him. <laughs> uh, we do not condone uh, nor uh, 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 agree with every statement Uncle Jimmy said, but uh, he do be cooning hard, and it's hilarious. All right, shoot. I condone everything he said. <laughs> right, look, this is not, it's not brought to you by 510. Uh, high score podcast, but it's brought to you by Captain FIFA. You females better believe it. A woman storms ain't no match for Uncle Jimmy and the hit stick. <laughs> ain't no match. <laughs> All right. And my name is Jarrett, aka DJ Art. The D is silent, so it's just Jart. Also, there's two T's for a double dose of that tink tink. I'm not jerking your chain, fella. This guy, Logan, owes me $50,000. If I don't get it soon, I'm talking! All right. Now, who's Logan, and what do you know about him? All I can tell you, sir, is that he's gay. Gay, gay! That's it. I have enough of this guy. You want. certainly have. Listen with me. You're going to be hearing from my office, detective. Let me bite my tongue. Uh-huh. And then he said I was ugly and I couldn't read good. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got football starting up. Pedro, it's football season. Yeah, it's football season. I was, man, I was so hyped. I'm so hyped. I don't know who's on what team and who's doing what and who got traded. Yo, Cleveland Browns, that's all you need to know. You should be a hype on your Cleveland Browns. <laughs> man, the Cle- <laughs> Cleveland Browns out here talking big game. Once I make it, no bullet. Can affect me. None. <laughs> None. I want you next. Right. <laughs> Dude. You know, I'm loving this. I love all this um all this paper champion talk that Cleveland Browns are doing. I'm I'm the master of paper champion talk. Yeah, you used paper used champion to, when we used to paper champion talking tech mobile. That's what I was gonna say. Tech mobile too. See the great thing about tech mobile, you can make it through a season in like a week, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it usually just really two days. So sometimes we'll play like for a whole weekend or we'll start it on like Sunday and end it the next Saturday. Me and Pedro go a, a season and we used to pick names out of a hat, right? Mm-hmm. And we'll pick names out of a hat and then we try to get it so we were one was an NFC team and one was an AFC team and they were comparable, right? So that yeah. way we could just have the same battle making it through. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you this. We did this like seven times. This motherfucker never made it to the Super Bowl to play me in. Really? Ah, uh, that's not true. The closest you came was that one, the one that you should have made it when you went undefeated with Kansas City Chiefs 
and didn't make it to the damn Super Bowl to play. Because we, I couldn't throw the ball when Steve Bird got old in the playoffs. <laughs> he was already old. That one year aged him hard. <laughs> Dude, Pedro was the paper champion at Super Technical Bowl. I'm pretty sure there was some, there was one point where um, I made the Super Bowl. <laughs> I think you made it to one, and then I ended up beating you in that one. That was it. Uh, like I said, Pedro was just. He was a paper champion, just like the Cleveland Browns of this year. I'm going to say this. Pedro, I hope your team does well, just so that they can continue a positive storyline. But I'm also happy to see it turn into a dumpster fire and have a whole bunch of loud-talking big personalities uh, collapse on themselves in the Browns locker room because I don't like some of them that much. So we'll see what happens. I think uh, the Browns have a really good chance to be offensively very – very dynamic, but um, right. and the defense has been built. They got the, the a good defensive uh, GM who knows how to find good talent for defense. So if everything plays well together, it could be really tight. But it's a really young team with some big personalities at the top of the team, and that I, right. we'll see. We'll see what they yeah. do. But they, yeah, yeah. But but well, let's just say that if they had a huge Hugh Jackson, it would fall apart way faster. Oh yeah, it's just this is one. He was 1-1-31, one, one, and 31, am I correct? <laughs> yeah, he, he only won one game in all those years, dude. <laughs> well, last year he won a couple of happen? How do you have somebody run out for two seasons and don't even show signs of a winning? <laughs> nothing. Not even a culture. He was, he was building. He was building. You know what? Games, Hugh maybe Jackson. Or maybe seven I'm, games. You dropped out of four games, I'm, and I'm, everybody liked you. From no, my, you, were, you were doing... He was out here doing numbers like just in reverse. From my Cal experience with Hugh Jackson, because he was offensive coordinator under Steve Mariucci, Hugh Jackson was like that uh, precocious little kid, like Lane Kiffin. That's what that, that's how I heard someone describe Lane Kiffin as a precocious little kid, like the guy that was uh-huh. young and knew everything about like offense, knew everything. You're just like everybody wanted him around. Like he would go to these coaches' conventions. People loved talking to him. It's like, man, this guy knows his stuff. He, he could break down bunch the bunch formation and ways of getting guys open. But then when it came to doing it on the field, he just sucked. My homeboy, Jerome, who was working the criminal room, used to just, Hugh Jackson come in, Jerome, I need my shit white, man. And Hugh Jackson would put in his regular clothes and like his bag. You know, the coaches would take off whatever they wore that day and put in these like athletic mesh bags and you throw the whole bag along with the player stuff. You just throw the bag into the washing machine. When I worked the criminal room, we used to do the same thing. Hugh Jackson would wear, bring, they said, Jerome said, man, this motherfucker would be putting in, like, suits, shirts in there, and then ask the motherfucker to iron it after we take mm-hmm. it out and be like, man, this motherfucker got a suit shirt and nice shit. It's as close from home. He would be putting in a blue bag. He was like, Jerome, oh, I like my shit to be white, man. Make sure you put bleach in there. So Jerome, man, he's got tired of Hugh Jackson after game six. Told me he started putting mm-hmm. his shit in there with, like, the team's, like, muddy shit, dude. Hugh, Hugh Jackson. Jackson wears every welcome out, Pedro. Yeah, well, he Jackson was like, man, y'all got free laundry service, you know, y'all got free bedside service too. Exactly, you know, it's sort of like, sort of like you, Pedro. You know how you take advantage of shit. <laughs> you know, you wear out, you wear out your welcome at my house. You know, eat up all the fries, and pops give us both fries. And next thing I know, I go to the bathroom, come back, you left me three fries. Entertainment news: uh, Dave Chappelle came out with a new stand-up called Sticks and Stones yes. on Netflix. Yeah, uh, hour long. You watch it. Oh, you you synced it. I told you. Hey, Pedro, Jared was right. He said you watched it. Hey, so uh, overall, gist of it, or over, just uh, overall impression, I thought it was uh, was funny and, and and poignant in many ways. I think it revealed a, a, a layer that that you don't hear or see as often in a comedy in certain ways, maybe, but that's me just liking Dave Chappelle. But Pedro, what was your take take from, uh, take from away from Sticks and Stones? Shout out sponsorship. Okay, so um, my first take on Sticks and Stones is, uh, is very, it's probably very sensitive for millennials. Mm-hmm. And um, good. Because y'all need something like that. <laughs> um, he kind of hit on how everybody feels. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, how everybody feels and how everybody wants to cancel everybody now. And I love how he went in on the just of that. Mm-hmm. It, these are jokes. He is up there telling jokes. Yeah. You, can't, you know, these new comedians can't even tell jokes without 
without being criticized yeah. about what's real in life. This, the point of being a comedian is making people laugh. It's not there to be political, and he touched on it. Yeah. And it was perfectly done. It was very tasteful, and you knew the people who were offended. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. So get at me on my Twitter, at <laughs> Captain P. Funk. <laughs> At me, at me on that. At, <laughs> at me on my Twitter. Well, you can I, find me on Twitter. That ain't really me. Yeah, I know. I, uh, the the <laughs> the majority. Hey, shout out to uh, Captain P Funk on Twitter. Uh, sponsorship <laughs> handle. Uh, come on our show. Um, yeah, the, the thing I saw from it that I thought was interesting was like, yeah, he he. I think what he was trying to do was give a, in his black perspective, uh, understanding of the world and how like how how sensitivities have like. Gone crazy, yeah. And, ultra sensitive. I yeah. don't know how this came about. Yeah, I don't know um, why. I don't know. It's just, I guess, because you get so much information. Yeah, you young people like, hey, I gotta give it to the younger generation. They know a lot. They know a lot. You know, it's right there. Yeah, and when they study, they can get so much. Hey, I'm all for that. Yeah. But the sensitive part, I just never got. Let me, I watch young men out here crying in these streets, mm-hmm. being just as sensitive as the ladies, like they didn't gave birth or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's wrong with these young cats. <laughs> just they see too much hurt in the world. I, see, I think they, they can't handle too much of the truth. Yeah, there's a lot of emo rap right now. It's like those fools <laughs> auto tuning emo rapping about, you know, their feelings, which is a totally different. All in their feelings like this fool drink. <laughs> Exactly, and I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I love a woman, you mm-hmm. know, you know me, I love women. I don't like to really uh, comfort women in a way, but I'm not gonna be all of my feelings, and I'm not gonna do anything silly like these young kids are doing. I don't comfort nobody, baby. Yeah, they probably killing y'all, hanging themselves, and and. Once you know people are bullied, or, it's just I don't know, man. It, he kind of touched on a lot of that stuff. And I I really appreciate. It. We need we need more of that. Did he talked about getting hand jobs in the bathroom. <laughs> Come on. No, he didn't talk about that. So the the main thing that he's gotten flagged, Dave Chappelle has, has been about like the LGBTQ and the and the Me Too movements. He talked. He even brought up Kevin Hart, and we'll get to Kevin Hart in a second. What happened this weekend? Uh, shout out to Kevin Hart sponsorship. But uh, he brought up Kevin Hart. He said in one of his jokes, "Is like Kevin Hart was uh, four tweets away from being perfect. He's like he's almost perfect. He's like the most popular comedian. Mm -hmm. He's worked hella hard to get to where he's been, and." He's he's at the top of his game, and he gets to you know do the one thing that he's you know has been one of his dreams to host the Oscars, Academy Awards, and because of four tweets mainly that were brought up about him making a joke uh, about if his son was gay, you know, saying being it was homophobic in 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 the the joke, but at the same time like it was a joke, and it was something that I think a lot of parents in our history and parents in general more than we want to admit probably think about that when they have a son or daughter it's like is my son or daughter gonna be you know saying What's normal in which ways yeah. like sexuality are they gonna be normal with uh you know saying their their right. social and, and and intellectual mm-hmm. you know areas mm-hmm. are they gonna mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so. our parents used to say boy you ever look at another man i'll beat the gay out of you <laughs> I, I see that, that, and as bad as that is, like I have to laugh yeah. at it. I think that's that's that is one of our responses. Like that's something that's funny because we know it's 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 a very real sentiment, but it's also right. outlandish in certain ways. Like it's like yeah. it's like it's outlandish, but it's also like a real thing, and that's that's where it lies sometimes. And it, and it came, and it, you know, and it also came down. It also came down the line too. So if your brother, so your older brother, would be like, if you if you mess around with. Uh, if I ever see you uh, wear a dress or play with dolls, you can't do that. So it's came from the other. And, it's, and the women in their family continue the same. Yeah. It ain't just the man. Yeah. It, you know, in our generation. Now it's like, okay, you know, let's uh, try to figure out this child's sexuality at adolescent or at, at, at toddler. At toddler. No, yeah. no, no, man. No. Yeah. No. No. When you a kid, that. you a kid. Yeah, be a kid. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about sex. All I wanted to do as a kid was play. Yeah. Play. 
Thank you. Play. That's, 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 that's what you should be making sure that your child is doing what makes them happy. Yeah. Be a kid. Yeah. And actually, I wish they would have put push uh this her little mother would probably get to talk. I actually wish they would have pushed uh <laughs> sex sexual education back to the ninth grade. Mm-hmm. Right, when did you have yeah. it? <laughs> eighth grade? You talking about that eighth grade one? That eighth grade, no, they only had it. When we was growing up, didn't they just only have like a class? No, they I had they had it. it in eighth grade and you needed it because I got you sitting backwards on the toilet in the bathroom. I didn't know what it meant all the years <laughs> until I went off to college and we caught someone else sitting back on the toilet and then my boy Travis said, He's stroking off, Aaron. That's what he's doing. You face backwards, so that way you just go straight into the toilet. And I was I like, oh, man, that. that's what Pedro was doing. Come on. I ain't never heard this thing. Dude, I never heard it either. I went off to college, and we caught somebody sitting. And we were like, what the fuck? And, my, and then Travis came in and was like, man, he was stroking off, man. He real oh, dexterous. Wow. He could turn his ankles, wow. his ankles the wrong way. Uh <laughs> Well, yeah, I think it was it was real it was real interesting to hear him make the joke about Kevin Hart because some of the tweets that he got in trouble for that they made him you know say he had to apologize for, um, and and whatnot that people were upset about was to some of those jokes at least one of them he said in one of his standups because I heard him saying it on his standup talking about his son being gay what he would do like and he like that's a big that's one of the big parts of his standups and people were fine with it then. And then all of a sudden the tweets come up. I'm like, you know, this was yeah. on his standups that he well, recorded those, those, on those, TV. Everybody loves to be triggered, Jared. Yeah. It's like they're looking for something to be triggered about. 